27th annual Yield Executive Summit. Kind of amazing. Seven years, holy cow. Thanks all for joining us. This is terrific. We have an amazing house full of publishers and other ecosystem players. Super excited. A lot of familiar faces, some new ones, which is great. So thank you all for joining us. This is going to be a terrific morning. We've been doing this on the Wednesday of Adweek for seven years. And um, we seem to keep getting bigger and, and more popular every time. So we've covered a lot of, uh, of cool topics over the years. Um, and we've got a bunch of, of great ones for you today. Um, we're super excited about having you know, the, the topic of 2016, header bidding. So we'll definitely talk about that. Um, we'll talk about different formats. We've got a very cool case study um, coming up. So there's just um, a bunch of great content. So make sure um, you stay tuned for all of that. A couple of quick housekeeping things um, as we get started. First of all, I know you're all going to be paying rapt attention to the speakers. But if you do have to answer that one email, um, we do have Wi-Fi. Um, and the SSID is up there. Yes, 2016, password app Nexus. Um, we do love feedback, so please, um, at the end of this, make sure you fill out a survey form. There's a raffle, um, so that'll be terrific. Um, for those of you who feel the need to uh, tweet or Snapchat or whatever it is you kids do these days, um, the hashtag is uh, hashtag YESummit2016, and that way we can all share photos and, uh, and that sort of thing. It'll be great fun. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, let's see. Uh, Later on, Andrew Rutledge is going to run a poll. And so uh, if you could just pull out your phone and text AppNexus to 2233, and that'll get you set up for the, for the phone poll. And then when Andrew does it um, a little bit later on in the day, you'll be all set to go ahead and, and answer questions. That's always a fun thing to kind of see how the audience um, feels about things. Um, and then finally, uh, thank you, thank you very much to our sponsors, um, great partners and great companies, uh, Microsoft, Operative, Paragon, and Oracle. Terrific to have such great partners in the ecosystem, and we would not be able to put on such a terrific event um, without their help. So uh, with all of that housekeeping stuff out of the way, I will put this away, and we will get started. So seven years. How's this industry doing? Well, actually, we're doing pretty darn well. If you look at the global advertising business, it's a huge industry, half a trillion dollars, and growing at a pretty good clip, actually, which is kind of amazing for a business that's this big. And the really good news, for the people in this room anyway, is digital is a lot of that growth, maybe all of it, 11% growth just in digital. So we're seeing a, tr a ton of growth for the things that um, help the people in this room, right? The rising tide for the votes in this room, which is really great. And even better news is programmatic is like 20%. So the fastest growing sector of the digital part is the programmatic part. So this is all terrific news. Everything is uh, coming up roses for everybody in this room, right? Well, there is a but. Actually, there are two buts. There are two pretty big buts, actually. Um, they're Facebook and Google, right? So how, think about this and how many, I mean, many of you probably heard, how much, what percentage of the global digital advertising industry is Facebook and Google? It's a pretty, it's a pretty big number. Globally, they're only 44%, only 44%. They're like half the business, right? And in the US, it's actually, we've heard numbers much bigger. Depending on what analysts you ask, 80, 85, 90% minutes, they're huge numbers, right? These guys are, are running away with this business. And the worst news is it's accelerating, right? So even this global number is accelerating over the last year and you know, it's not, not going down anytime soon. So the real question is, you know, what are we gonna do about it? So let's talk about that. First, let's talk about like, what are they, what are they actually doing? What is it that Facebook and Google and some of these other companies are doing right that we could look at and try and understand, hmm, what, what's, what can we learn from this? So Facebook's a social network. Should we all become social networks? No, nah, I don't think so. But what are, they, what are they really doing when you sort of look under the covers? Well, their, their key asset, their key leverage 
is around their audience data. And they spend a lot of time and energy managing and leveraging and activating their audience data. Well, what are they doing with that? How are they actually making that useful? So, you know, the audience data is the first thing that they try and capture. How are they making that useful? Well, they use that data and they build their business around it. And their business is acquiring and engaging and monetizing these audiences. So if you think about it, they spend a lot of time using their data to engage their audience, using their data to monetize their audience. So, and it's really, it's working for them, right? They're, they're the largest platform out there, arguably something like 25% of all internet traffic is going through these guys. Um, so this is working, but this is just one data point. So let's take a look at some other companies that seem to be doing pretty well and see if we can, see if we can connect any dots here. So let's take a look at Amazon. People think about Amazon as an e-commerce platform. Is there any real commonality between Amazon and Facebook? Well, when you, again, when you start looking under the covers, you realize Amazon spends an awful lot of time and energy managing their audience data. And when they really think about what they're doing, they're spending a lot of their time going out and finding the audiences to bring into Amazon. They spend, they're one of the largest marketers on the web, spend a lot of time and energy acquiring their audiences. They engage with them. They're actually one of the largest content sites on the web because they have all of the reviews and all the other things that are on there. And then, of course, they monetize them. They monetize them by selling them things, right? We all buy our paper towels or whatever from Amazon, but they also monetize them through advertising and through other channels. So they're activating that user data in a lot of different ways. Okay, so we got two data points. Wonder if other businesses are doing similar kinds of things. Let's, let's maybe take a few more examples. Well, if you look at lots of different kinds of internet businesses, as you start to really drill down in here, you have companies like Verizon. I mean, Verizon is a telephone company, right? They, they run wires in the ground. Like, how can they possibly be an audience platform? But, of course, they went out, they bought AOL and Yahoo to help build that portfolio, but they have a lot of information about their customers. And these businesses are transforming. So you have other examples. News Corp has a strategic, you know, global strategic initiative to take all of their properties and begin using the audience data in a common way and using the acquisition and the monetization across those properties together for the benefit of all of them, right? Snapchat, you think photography, like how can photography be an audience platform? But again, what are they doing? They're really acquiring audiences, engaging them, and then you know, monetizing them through a wide variety of innovative ad formats. Um, and then you know, Activision, another kind of interesting example of a company that is a game company. And you would think, well, you know, they write games, they sell games. How has that got commonalities with these other things? But again, they're building around their audience data and they're engaging with their audiences in deep ways and they're finding creative ways to monetize them. And I would argue that if you start really looking deeply at these and you start connecting these dots, virtually every business is becoming digital. We hear these pronouncements, digital's eating the world, the internet's eating the world, but it's true. Virtually every business is becoming digital in, in one way or another. They're becoming internet enabled in one way or another. And as businesses become digital, and as they become internet enabled, it becomes more and more important for them to manage their audiences. It becomes more and more important for them to be able to do all of these things in this circle to acquire, to engage, to monetize audiences. So let's, let's take a little bit, drill down a little bit farther and kind of think about what does it really mean to do this? What, what, what are, again, like what are some of the commonalities here? Well, the first thing, as I've talked about, is this audience data platform. What are the key characteristics of the audience data platform? Well, you gotta be able to capture data, of course. You gotta be able to activate it on a bunch of different channels. But you also have to be able to predict it you have to be able to forecast it. You have to understand how it interacts. You have to be able to segment it. There are all, there's lots of sophisticated things you need to be able to do with the audience data in order to be able to take advantage of the other pieces, like using it to acquire more audience. What do you need to do to acquire more audience? Well, 
you need to understand what kind of audience are you trying to acquire. You can use the segmentation you've got in your audience data to help figure out what, who, who am I going after. You can use that to figure out pricing. How much is this audience worth to me? How much should I bid to bring that audience in? What kind of content should I put in front of that audience to attract them to my site or to, to, my, uh, to my goods and services? So there's all these things that you want to do around acquisition that, make, that take advantage of the audience data. Then there's the engagement part, right? You know, similarly with the content, what kind of content should I put in front of this audience in order to keep them engaged? What kinds of formats should I deliver that content in? We're going to have a panel later uh, with Pat McCarthy to talk about innovative new formats on the internet. That'll be pretty interesting. And then finally, we're all businesses, right? We have to monetize our audiences one way or another. And so how do we monetize? How do we understand how to price our audiences? How do we understand, for example, if someone wants to buy a sponsorship on our homepage, how do we know how to price that relative to what I might get on the open internet, on the open RTB exchange? And actually, we're going to have a really interesting case study from Ben Neen later about exactly that. How do you use sophisticated tools to understand the trade-offs between the open exchange and selling directly? So these are the key aspects of the audience platform, the audience data, and the tools that are required to acquire, engage, and monetize audiences. But no one in this room is as big as Google or Facebook. And we're probably not going to be able to do this by ourselves. So the other key aspect of this is to make sure that we're all participating in an ecosystem that enables us to acquire and monetize together, right? So my acquisition of audience may be your monetization of an audience. And so if we can work together in an open and transparent ecosystem, not one that's hidden behind walls, but one that enables us to freely transact with each other, then we can create a network effect that makes the rising tide float all the boats even faster, right? So this is really important. Let's make sure that we're all working together, the vendors, the publishers, the audience platforms, to grow this industry. Now, let's get specific about some of the things that you might be thinking about, that you might be able to actually do starting today to, act, to make this vision become more of a reality. And I know a lot of you are already doing many of these things, and you're doing it um, with, a, with a lot of the people in this audience. But to really compete in this industry, we're going to have to keep upping our game. So what are some of the things we should be thinking about? Number one, own your audience. It's your audience. Make sure you own them. Don't give them away to somebody else. Make sure you own them. Make sure you control it. Make sure you can build it. Make sure that you can activate it and you can use it to do all these things that we're talking about. So that's number one. Make sure you own your audience. Number two, use the transparent technology, right? The, tra the technology that's a black box isn't doing you any good. If you don't know how it works, if the ad tech tax is too high, it's not going to help anyone. So use transparent technology, works the way you think it's going to work, that lets us all work together in a way that brings the tide up for all of us. And then finally, partner for leverage, because we can't do it by ourselves. Some of those folks out there are just too big. We're going to have to work together to really get back our fair share of that internet pie. So you've got Facebook, Google, some of these other guys, they're taking a big piece. They're big players, and they've got tall walls. The only way we're going to be able to really come back against them is with an open, transparent, and vibrant ecosystem with all of us working together so we can take back our fair share of those global advertising dollars. Thanks. Mm -hmm.